Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the round table. Super Bowl week. Huge sports week. Huge. I'm here with my two guests today. I'll allow them to introduce themselves. All right, I'm Eric Linden. And I'm Chris Cohn. All right, so Patriots, another year, another Super Bowl. Who would have thought? <laughs> another one to add some hardware to our already impressive collection. Let's take a look at how we think the game's going to go. So the Patriots met the Eagles in 2005 at the Super Bowl with the Patriots winning 24 to 21. Let's see if we can repeat history. Do you guys think that the game's going to be close? I hope not. These recent games, uh, just last year, it was a heartbreaker. It was, it was real close. I wouldn't. I don't know if I want another one of those. Eric, what do you think? Well, I actually enjoy watching those very close games because I feel like the everyone in America like per, like prefers those kind of games. It gets the ratings up and. I think it's just like when the Patriots win, it's even better just because like when the game's close and like the Seahawks game when they got the interception on the line or the Falcons game, like everyone was into it the entire game. So I feel like a close game is what is what like we need, I guess. I want to see a blowout. <laughs> it's been way too close the past couple of years. Um, looking for a big win by the Pats. Another one for Brady, number six. So uh, hopefully we can do it. So... The Eagles are starting Nick Foles on Sunday night. He is obviously a fill-in with Carson Wentz going down with an ACL tear earlier this season. Um, but a nice stat is only seven fill-in QBs have ever won the Super Bowl, Brady being the last one after Drew Bledsoe went down. Do you think that this gives the Eagles an advantage knowing this going in? Well, I mean, I think Brady was able to um, have a whole season ahead of him when he got or at least half a season when Bledsoe went down. And uh, Foles only had a couple games, but, like, the game he played against Minnesota, he was electric, though. I mean, he had, he was, like, almost, he had, like, almost perfect QB rating. So I feel like even though Brady had the whole season coming in, like, going in to, like, the Super Bowl and like, getting able to get, like, chemistry with his teammates and, stuff, and um, form a relationship with his wide receivers, I still think Nick Foles will be able to, like start off well at least because he he played so well in the game before. I don't know if he'll be able to play the, to the exact same standard, but I feel like he he'll, he'll be like he'll be ready to go by the beginning of the game just because of his game last uh, last week. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think that if this Super Bowl though, if it was with Carson Wentz, it would be a completely different scenario. I think that this would be a much tougher game. But seeing Nick Foles gaining so much momentum and just these postseason postseason wins for them, uh, it's. It's interesting to see that team really getting back in action, leaving off where, where Carson Wentz kind of fell down. Yeah. All right. So in the coaching matchups after that QB discussion, this is Doug Peterson's first trip to the postseason this year. He's 2-0, and which is pretty good. But Bill Belichick, the greatest coach of all time, is 27-10 and in the playoffs. Obviously, there's an advantage on the Patriots' side. What do you think the Eagles will have to do? I just think the Eagles will have to come out of the gate just flying because like, that's what the Falcons did, even though they came up short. But I just think that the Eagles have to be able to lock down like lock down the matchups like what the Patriots do. And I think Foles has kind of like perfectly did last week in order for them to stand a chance just because Belichick is able to make adjustments in the game like no other coach. So like, even, if the, even if the Eagles do well like in the, at the start, they have to be able to keep it up. And like Foles has to be perfect, so I feel like it's going to be a tough task. But I, like that's what they'll have to do in order to beat the Pats. Yeah, I, I it's going to be a competitive game no matter what. But if they have uh, the the Eagles certainly have a lot of tape to look at from these past few years of us going to the Super Bowl, and if they want a good chance this game, I think they need to keep some momentum going throughout the entire game and keep on changing it up. Unlike other teams, the the uh, Patriots are relentless going into the halftime and and even being down, it's. It's their game. Yeah, like the Jaguars put like ninety five percent perfect, but like just that five percent, like Brady was able to capitalize in like the fourth quarter. Like, was there any time in that game, like the Jaguars, where you ever felt like we weren't gonna win? Because I felt like the whole like fourth quarter was just like, all right, this is gonna happen. Next thing's gonna happen. Then we're gonna win. Like, I don't it's, know. Uh, it's it. Those kind of games are close, but it's it's the kind of momentum you see when those teams like the Jaguars leave the field and. And they're almost headstrong with how they play and thinking they have all this momentum going to them. And 
Patriots play that right to their advantage and just spotting their weaknesses yeah, like, and exploiting. When it. I saw that like third and eighteen, like, I feel like that that always happens. Like Patriots get like third. I think they had it in the Falcons too. Like third and eighteen, Brady steps up and guns one to Amendola. I was like, all right, that we have this game in the bag because like it was a fourth quarter right then, and then it's just like a huge momentum play. And I was like, all right, we're not going to lose because like we can we can bust out those kind of plays. Like the the Eagles are going to have to be like a hundred percent perfect throughout the game because like. The Jaguars were very, very close to that, but Brady was just able to capitalize on those mistakes. Yeah, if I was if I was Doug Peterson right now, I'd almost prefer to have a tied game at second half. Yeah. So then you know that this is a pretty matched up teams rather than be up a few points, even if it's a touchdown and a field goal, um, and know that the Patriots are are changing their game to accommodate to what you've done. Yeah, I think the Eagles are going to play that that underdog card pretty pretty heavily, so that they don't they don't feel like they don't have any pressure going in. Whereas like the Patriots will have all the pressure going in. Well, they want they want the Patriots to think they have all the pressure going in, but I feel like Pelichick's gonna keep them like nice and regimented, and, like ready to go. So. You know what I've been thinking about this game is that the Eagles all season they've had a phenomenal defense. They've been able to hold teams to not a lot of points, but it's Tom Brady they're going up against. Like the offense is gonna score points, so they need to focus solely on their offense. Because if their offense isn't straight, then I don't think they have a chance. Well, the Patriots' defense is so good; they'll, they'll give up yards, but they just won't give up points. Like they'll give, they'll let the team like kind of get down. Like maybe they'll give up like maybe ten yards a play, but they don't, they don't give up the big yards. They don't give up the the huge plays, like the big momentum plays. That's why they're so that's why they're so consistently good. Like they don't have any any stars, but they just make sure like the teams like they don't they don't get any momentum for huge plays like that. Yeah, not to mention also the Patriots, they started off their season not the strongest start, pulled together by the end. And by postseason time, we saw some big plays come out from players that I personally, I mean, like if Stephon Gilmore with his almost game-saving um, block on the uh, one of the last drives. I, to be honest, had very little faith in him throughout the whole season. I didn't think that he was, he was you know, worth the trade. You thought Logan Ryan through. was better? Yeah. Better? yeah, but it was paid off. It, it just seemed to pay off in the end. Big, big time heroics for a big time paid player. So we'll see if he can carry that momentum into the Super Bowl. Um, but do you think there's any weaknesses that the Patriots have that the Eagles could take advantage of? Well, in the past, what teams have been successful on was just like blitzing Brady and making him like uncomfortable in the pocket. So I think that they're gonna have to rush him and like make sure he gets down early in the beginning of the game. So like sets the tones for the rest of the game. I think like that's what the Giants did in a couple of the Super Bowls and like they've been successful that way and um just be able to like they'll need they'll need like a miraculous catch like the like David Tyree or something like that. I feel like that that, that like if they want to beat the Patriots that something like that's got to happen because like even I think it was Curse against the I think it was Curse on the Seahawks who had that that ball that tipped up in the air. That was crazy like that. Like they're going to have to have something like that happen. But. Yeah, I completely agree. Miracles kind of or you're their only chance against the Patriots at this point. Um, it's something that, that Tom Brady, it's it's a matter of getting in the other team's head without even having to say anything. The the Patriots take pride in the fact that they don't they don't talk trash before games. They don't do anything. You, know, you saw the Jaguars last game, Jalen Ramsey, talking trash before the game. It wasn't talking Or the guy in the Pittsburgh Steelers who said, like, we can beat the Patriots anywhere, like, any time, even though they, haven't, uh, they didn't beat the yeah. Jaguars before that. And like. <laughs> All right, so this Super Bowl may be the last game for our two coordinators, Coach McDaniels and Coach Patricia, with speculation going on with McDaniels going to the Colts yeah. and Coach Patricia going to the Lions. Uh, what do you think um, the team will have to do to fill these posts? Well, previously the Patriots have been pretty pretty successful in filling those kind of positions. Like I think we had Bill O'Brien before who worked just as well, I think, as Josh McDaniels. Um, Belichick knows like what he needs out of his coaching staff. Um, he'll probably be able to pull up like the quarterbacks coach right now, and I think that's what happened to McDaniel. It's like he went from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator, and I think I think if we have Belichick, well, he'll be able to sort out a coaching position fairly, like not easily, but like he, he's just had so much experience. I feel like he'll be able to to figure something out pretty pretty quickly and have something work just as well as McDaniel's has. What do you guys think of the odds that that one of his sons? takes one of the positions or at least moves up to that quarterback position from whoever's in that position right now like moving up the ranks like 
What what, do you, what are the odds you think of that? Well, what what, is, what what are his son's titles right now? Like, what are they? Are they just like? I think they're linebackers, coaches, yeah. Oh, yeah. things like that. Yep. They're not they're not too high on the totem pole, but these are two big vacancies that um, I'd be I'm interested to see what Belichick is going to want to do, and it's not just Belichick's decision on that matter, but he plays a strong role and you know influence the game. Yeah. See, I don't know if it's going to be this year that he pulls up his sons to be yeah. coaches just because I think he'll look for experience in his last couple seasons, but I could see him pulling them up like near when he decides to retire yeah. to try to continue the Belichick legacy in the NFL. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think that I, I don't think he looks at them differently than other coaches. Yeah. I think the only advantage that they have is they have a lot of exposure and they learn a lot from him. So therefore, I'm pretty sure Belichick's dad was a coach, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's a dynasty that they've got going. It's it's in their blood. All right. All right. On to our next topic, the factors that the Patriots need to win. What do you think they need to do? Well, I just think the Patriots need to. Well, I think it's kind of cliche, but I think Belichick always says like, "Do your job." I think like they don't have to get too caught up in the game. I'm pretty sure they're pretty pretty experienced with this. They. They all know like what it's like to be in the big game, like with the spotlight. I know, like I'm pretty sure I've heard the players say, like the Super Bowl it goes ten times faster as a normal game. But I think Patriots players know like how to how to calm themselves before the game and like how to make sure that they're ready to go and like they have all the pregame rituals that they they'll do. But um, yeah, I, mean, I think just the cliche thing, like do your own job, Patriots, like what they've been able to do, and. Um, be able to execute like I think Gronk's coming Gronk will be ready to play I think they cleared him yesterday so I think if we can exploit Philly's weaknesses and make sure like we we get on top early and just keep scoring like I think the Pats defense will be able to stop the the Eagles and I think if that works out then I think we'll be we'll be we'll be good to go yeah yeah I completely agree with that with and you brought up how Gronk's going to be on the field uh, it's I think that's a huge factor yeah. for Philly um as of right now, I mean, like, you can't play Gronk. You can't play defense against him without a safety and a corner on him at all times. Like, he's he's just going to get away. One-on-one matchups for Gronk or what he eats for breakfast. That guy, He's just a monster in all directions. Um, on top of that, like, when he pulls, it's just his presence on the field as well. Talking about, like, the, the Philly defense is going to want to really focus on watching all the other players because even, even if he's not slotted to catch the ball, he can block. He can do all sorts of different functions that they need to pay attention to with with players like Amendola and Hogan on the t- on the play uh, it's it's going to be something that they're going to have to like really yeah. accommodate we all, we also need Gaskowski to uh to hit his extra point after <laughs> point after point there i mean yeah, he's point after quite touchdown a few of those PAT. and that happened against the, the Broncos and the and the Falcons <laughs> he had an up until like last season he had an incredible record for for a made uh PAT in a row I think it was point. that was before like the uh, they made the rule when they moved it back. Yeah. Like, he got on the kicker's heads for some reason. Yeah. I think he hit like what was it like 150 in a row from that from that original spot. Yeah, it's it's an adjustment. Yeah. All right, so I think for us to win, we need to do as we did last year. James White was obviously a huge part of the win last year with three touchdowns, yeah. something like that. So I think involving or establishing a run game and involving the running backs in the passing game is key to winning this game because the Eagles are obviously going to expect us to do our short slants and things like that and get those extra yards. But I think having people come out of the backfield and running the ball will help us win these games because I feel like they're just not ready for it. And they have they have the Garrett Blunt too. So, like, we, we know all about him. Like, if they get in the goal line, they're just going to let him punch it in. So... Like we gotta be ready for that as well. All right, so the Eagles are seeking their first Super Bowl win, ever. And uh, what do you guys think that they need to do? Well, it's I think it's one of the, I brought it up earlier. It's, it's still mo- the momentum, and they can't get too ahead of themselves after the halftime. If they get up by a few points in the first half, that means nothing to the Patriots. That's 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 so minuscule. Um, even as we saw last year in the Super Bowl, it's it's nothing to the Patriots, that kind of stuff. But if they can, at the least, change their game going into the second half and adjust for the Patriots and not just to keep the momentum going, seeing how the Patriots are playing and, and trying to beat them at their weaknesses that 
they haven't even exploited yet going into the second half, I think that's going to be huge for, for them. Yeah, I think the Patriots have an undefeated record against teams that they didn't play in the regular season, that they not that they now play in the postseason. So, like, they played the Giants in the uh, last season, the re- last regular season game in 07. They had time to prepare for the Super Bowl. And um, I think that the Eagles are just going to have to – like, they don't, the Eagles won't have any time to prepare. Like, like, they'll have time to prepare, but they won't be able to, like, see it in action like most – like the teams that have been successful against the Patriots in the postseason – like, because the, they don't they don't get to see him like a sneak peek before, like a preview before in the regular season. I think that's just, like a, a huge factor, and like, um, I think they just need to be able to like Chris was saying, like come out with momentum, and like that's how they'll be able to win. All right. So next, we'll talk about <clears throat> the Eagles quarterback situation. Uh, how do you guys think this team would do if they had a healthy Wentz at the helm? Well, uh, it's one of those kind of things where I think that he he had a lot of steam behind him. And the whole team was was pretty centered around Wentz, so him going down, I feel like, was pretty pretty had strong, profound effect on the rest of the team, um, and especially, and I think it was brought up earlier the um, the connection you have with your wide receivers. I mean, even in the off season, Brady still throws with Edelman when he's practicing, and we see it in the Tom vs. Time, which is a fantastic um, documentary. Brilliant. He's he's still Brilliant. practicing. He's Just working brilliant. on his mechanics, and. Um, it's it's a matter of of comfortability with the team and getting moving. I think that's what Foles has done, but it's something that Wentz started. It, yeah. it began with Wentz, and he was having an amazing season. Um, and had he gone into the Super Bowl, I feel like this would be a completely different game. Um, but nonetheless, a a competitive on both sides. I yeah, I think like I kind of disagree with you slightly, just because I think Foles like. The quarterback, I think, like all the players, have been doing the same thing. Like, even if they have like the chemistry, I feel like their, their defense is like pretty solid, and their their offense is pretty solid, anyways. I'm pretty sure Foles has played played like before with them, and so I think like even though like Carson Wentz was able to get all this momentum, I, I'm pretty sure Foles like it, it would probably be like the same kind of scenario going in. Like the Patriots would still be favored, and I think like the it wouldn't really change that much. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, I think the, one of the more deciding factors in all this is the defense. And Brady has gone into numerous of these Super Bowls with outstanding defenses, and now we're looking at these two teams and, and the statistics, they're, they're, they're head-to-head. The two defenses are, are practically equal in, in comparison. Um, and the, the Eagles' defense, it's, it's incredibly strong. And that's what I think carried Foles to this postseason. Okay. He had an amazing last game against the Vikings, but but that wouldn't have been possible if his defense wasn't holding up the other end of the line, yeah. which is crucial also for Brady. When he isn't playing at his top game, which is very rare, it's a matter of can the defense perform. And obviously we saw it first the Seahawks. They more than just performed. They won the game. Um, so it's it. I think it goes on two sides of the ball as well. Well, I think like Brady, what's so impressive is Brady's been able to like basically – like eliminate legacies like when he played the Rams they had already won a Super Bowl and they beat Kurt Warner and um and then they played like I think the 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 Seahawks who already won a Super Bowl before they they were all like carrying a lot of momentum they he he was able to beat them and like they had a huge defense and then just last year like the the Falcons they were they were like they were supposed to to have like the best offense in like the, the past decade and he was able to beat them and he was also to take down like Peyton Manning who was just like he was like always the second guy compared to Tom because like he was always Tom was always able to to rise above in the big games because he was just be able to beat the best and that's why I think he's the best like I mean, that's why he's been able to have the greatest career of all time yeah. All right, so uh, on to Nick Foles after we talked about Carson Wentz. So since Wentz came off an almost MVP season until he tore his ACL, um, Foles probably won't have the top QB spot next year. So do you think this helps Foles in the market for free agency or trade after the season? Well, I, I, I think it's tough. I think if Foles is able to, to win the Super Bowl, like, and he plays well, I feel like he should have the job. Even though if people say, like, yeah, well, Carson Wentz, he was the league MVP, I, I still think, like, even if you're the league MVP, I feel like being able to, to, like, do very, very strong in the playoffs, like, it's very hard to come by. And I think the Eagles would be – like kicking themselves, they let Foles go if they if he was able to win the, to win them a Super Bowl. That being said, if Foles doesn't win a Super Bowl, I feel like 
even if he because he's played this well so far, I think the Eagles will have like a good a good weapon, like a good trade value for him, even if like he doesn't play well in the Super Bowl here because he's been able to to do so well in the postseason so far. Yeah, I I think no matter what next season he's he's getting traded. Yeah. Um, I think this off season, even let's say the the point oh one percent chance that the Eagles <laughs> win the game, um, and Nick Foles has a great Super Bowl caliber game, um, and gives the Eagles their first Super Bowl. It's it's Carson Wentz team. It's his team, and he showed that throughout the entire season. Um, and I think that for for Foles, it's just going to be a matter of what team is going to want him next. Um, and at that level, that's great for the Eagles because then they can prove they can they can put that amazing market value on them, on him, and and get fill in spots that were previously weak for the Eagles, um, wherever that be um, in slot places. But it's it's a matter of how they value him as a quarterback and how he works with the team as well, um, which is going to have to be evaluated on numerous different levels. All right, so our dynamic duo, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, have been dealing with some injuries lately. Tom obviously has the hand issue with his thumb and the stitches and things like that, and Gronk has also had his concussion. So uh, Brady's hand, are you worried? Well, I mean, like, he was able to, to be – he could throw it, fun, like, pretty well against the uh, the Jaguars. So I'm actually – I'm not worried at all. He, he's even had a whole another, a whole another week to, to be able to have it heal, so I think he'll be – I think he'll be ready to go. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that uh, despite the, the press conference wearing a glove, I feel like that's just a matter of um, getting in the heads of other people. It's it's for, for Brady, he can do the littlest, smallest things, and people are going to overanalyze it a thousand times. Um, so I feel like I think his hand is it's probably fine at this point. The stitches are probably out, and it's still probably healing a little bit. By the time the game is on Sunday, it's... I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. Yeah, he he's such a competitor that I think no matter what the injury, like he'll he'll be able to be ready to go. Like I'm pretty sure, like p- players in the past have said, like he's so tough. Like we, like the audience doesn't know like the injuries that he's played with, and like like some of his players can't even believe like he's been playing with the with those kind of injuries. So I think like considering this is like might be one of his last, or hopefully not his last, but nearing the end of his career, like I think there's nothing to stop him. I think he'll be ready to go, and like be able to play as well as he did previously, yeah. All right, Gronk was cleared from the concussion protocol yesterday, and he was back at practice. Um, does this concern you for Sunday? Not the, not that he won't play, but that he'll play differently after taking that kind of hit. Uh, I think that it's, it's for Gronk, these kind of injuries are, are pretty normal to him at this point. Um, it's, it's one of those kind of things where it all adds up, and when you get to that Super Bowl caliber kind of game, which for Gronk, it's 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 kind of a – he usually has these kind of injuries going out of the regular season now, and it's just because he's such a big target. I mean, the guy, he's he needs at least two guys. I brought it up earlier. He needs safety and a corner on, on him at all times. Otherwise, he's just going to beat you on that one-on-one. Um, so – Going into the Super Bowl, I think he's going to want to prove that he's the, the, the tight end and he's he's ready for, for the Super Bowl in, uh, in general. Um, and I can see him putting up some pretty good numbers on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, just like the, the bad thing about the concussion is, like, the whole league, they're, they're like, really cutting down, like, the, the whole protocol thing and the, and the CTE. So I just don't want to see, like, him get – to hurt himself even more coming back too soon if that if that's the case if he's trying to come back too soon I just feel like if he really if like he should only come back if he's 100% 100% ready but if he is ready I think like I think he'll he'll be able to play as well as he did I don't think his play will diminish at all but um but yeah you just got to be careful about that CT kind of stuff and like the concussion protocol you got to make sure he's doing it correctly that's about it all right so we've been talking a lot of football but the Super Bowl is also a pop culture holiday yeah. for America as well. Obviously, commercials, lots of foods, parties, that kind of thing. So we're going to take it that way. What is you guys' favorite Super Bowl snack? Um, I got to give it to those buffalo wings. They're messy, but they're just they're delicious. It's easily number one for me. Um, I think that it's, it's key to have your wings, 
your napkins and your soda or drink, but without you know not getting in the way of the jump zone. So when Brady obviously throws touchdown passes and I jump up and scream, I'm not about to knock my wings halfway across the room and plaster the wall. You know, I need to have them safe, but I need to have them within an arm's reach of me at all times during the game. What do you guys think? I got to go with uh, some a nice bowl of chili and some cornbread. Again, you can't go wrong there. Um, yeah, that's that's mine at least. What about you, Jack? Huge buffalo chicken dip guy. Oh, love dip? it. Yeah, the dip. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. All right, so there's a lot of prop bets going on in Vegas. Um, lots of kind of weird things, pretty funny things. So one of them is the Justin Timberlake, what he's going to ride in on at halftime. Do you think that's going to be a noteworthy thing to watch? or? I mean, I don't, I don't usually watch the halftime shows that much. I'm not really interested in that in too much but if there's prop bets like I, I guess like I'll I'll tune in to see like what what he what he arrives in I'm pretty sure like the entrances are pretty electric sometimes I think Lady Gaga like left the on like a helicopter last year or something like that it was crazy yeah. um but yeah Wait. yeah it's an interesting um it's an interesting event to say the least um I think he's a fantastic performer in general he's gonna be great for the Super Bowl um and but I I just don't know. There there are hilarious bets going on right now. There's there's one or two on um whether or not he'll like ride in on like a dog sled or fly in or come out of the stage. I I'm interested to say the least what's gonna happen. Um I feel like last year what was it was like a fly in. Yeah, it um, was Gaga. It's it's you, you just don't know what to expect. They they really try and surprise you on that level. Yeah. yeah. You think that his old band in sync is gonna arrive with him? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, do I don't not know about that one. It, it'd be surprising. I don't know what other cameos do you think might happen though with JT. Well, like, he, I mean, Bruno Mars always seems like he's he's going to do something there. He he's, pops out of nowhere. Every yeah, he could time. be in the stands. He could pop out and just yeah, he's Super Bowl ready at all times. He's like he's Michael Jackson. Ball. He's pretty. He's a pretty good dancer. Yeah, I feel. Like, yeah, yeah. He's a performer. Yeah. All right. So, what is you got in you guys' opinion <laughs> is the best Super Bowl commercial ever? Oh, it's tough. Most recent one, this year, I just saw one. Uh, it was pretty good. It was like an Amazon Alexa app, you know, like the little, like, circle thing where you talk to it and it kind of tells you stuff. Um, it was like the, the little thing loses its voice, and all of a sudden, like, it cuts to, like, these people, and they're like, um, like oh, what are we going to do? They have a backup plan. It's like Cardi B's voicing it and um, Gordon Ramsay. Um, it's pretty funny. It's a good one. But I, I, I don't know. Best one ever? Um there have been some pretty interesting and uh, off the scale kind of commercials in the past, but I'm not sure what it would take you know the top top spot. I mean, I guess like the Volkswagen one from a couple of years ago, where like the the kid was using like the pretending he was Darth Vader using the Force and stuff, and then the and the dad like opened the car from the from the house. I feel like that one was pretty good. Yeah, that like one the was, kid yeah. thought he was using the Force. That, that was, was pretty, pretty funny. I think you can always count on Doritos for having a pretty funny one. You can. Yeah. You can count on them. Like I'm pretty sure there was one where like some guy like was trying to eat his Doritos and like threw a chip and like got stuck in his neck. That was kind of funny. Uh, that was a couple years ago. Um, yeah, Coca-Cola also does a pretty good job with the polar bear. Yeah. They 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 generally I, I forget what last year's was, but they 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 have a tradition of being at least comedic in their value. Yeah. yeah. I'm a huge fan of the uh, the Budweiser Clydesdales, the one with the puppies. Love those. <laughs> Super cute. Love it. All right. So, big question from across the nation. Should the Monday after the Super Bowl be a national holiday, or should we move the game to Sunday well, I just or feel Saturday? Like, yeah, I just feel like you can't move Super Bowl Sunday to a Saturday. It just doesn't, doesn't work. It'd be like, it'd be like moving Thanksgiving to like a Wednesday. It just it doesn't seem right. Um, and, like, I, I mean, I don't think it should be – some people think, like, it should be a, a delay. I mean, it might – I, that might be pretty good. Like having a delay, like kids be so that they're really ready and fresh to go on Monday morning after the after the Patriots win again. But um, like, I don't think it should be a, a complete national holiday just because like we don't have to make it up in like June. It should be a kind of a waste of time. But, like I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure about a national holiday, but at least you know a Massachusetts New England holiday. Yeah, I mean, what <laughs> what other teams like the Philadelphia fans would want to have that Monday off to reconcile after getting whooped like that? You when, know, like it's just it's one of those kind of things where it's it's kind of want to get on with their lives yeah. after you know facing the Patriots is, it's, it's a common thing is the parade usually the day after is it like two usually days after Tuesday oh it's yeah. Tuesday yeah. I feel like that would be better to have like a delay on because the people the whole the whole city go watch their team 
celebrate it and celebrate with them. I feel like that would be more reasonable to have the parade off. Yeah, yeah, I see you, yeah. Mm. Um, so we've come to the end of our show. So what's your final prediction for the game? Um, I would say that it has to be the the some points has to be close to forty. I don't see them. I don't. I sadly don't see this becoming a blowout win, but I, at the least, I see Patriots winning, taking the dub, um, twenty four to seventeen. I see that. Twenty four to seventeen. All right, All right, Eric. I'm gonna go twenty eight twenty Patriots. Um, I just feel like they'll have they'll be able to get that one touchdown ahead, and I think that'll be that'll be it. Yeah. All right. I got a high scoring Patriots win. 35-14, Pats. Um, yeah, I just, I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling <laughs> it this year. I'm feeling a blowout. All right. We so I'd like to thank you all for watching the roundtable today. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>